Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Today I wanted to talk about third professional part one and part two. My general guide about how I went about studying for third MBBS or final year of MBBS. A quick disclaimer, the advice which I'm going to give is certainly going to be different from what your seniors or other people are going to give. I will give you some hard recommendations and some soft recommendations. Hard recommendations are definitely the things to avoid which you should not be doing and while soft recommendations are the things which you can try out for yourself and then if it suits you, you can use them. Third MBBS part one right now with the new modified syllabus from 2018 or 19 has ENT ophthalmology, community medicine and FMT. It's of 13 months. Third MBBS part two is medicine, surgery, obstetric, gynae and pediatrics. It's, of, it's again of 13 months from what I have heard. So total of 26 months of third MBBS part one and part two. With that being said, in my humble opinion, the way I did it was I clubbed part one and part two together. So in my mind, there was no separate part one or no separate part two. I utilized time in part one to study medicine, surgery and other subjects while at the same time I studied uh, IENT ComMed. Let's start the recommendation by going over the resources uh, which you are supposed to use during part one quickly. So this is going to be a general trend for most of the subjects in part one, I, ENT, community medicine and FMT. We had our FMT in our second year when second year used to be uh, like three semesters, but whatever. So in I, ENT, I would suggest like follow an Indian author, a book which you will be able to quickly go over the subject before your final exams. And then the other resource which you will need is a, for, is a foreign author or some sort of a video uh, resource which you can use to learn the subjects. So quickly for I, the book which I'm going to suggest is Kurana. Everybody uses it. I don't uh, recommend buying it. You can ask a senior to lend it to you. For ENT, the book is Dhingra. For community medicine, we all know we need to do PARC. Obviously, you don't need to read all of PARC, but try to go over the important topics which might be asked in your examinations. For I and ENT, I recommend watching Paul Bolling's videos. Dr. Bolling did an excellent job creating these videos which you can definitely use and um, learn this subject. Going over these videos two or three times definitely gives you an idea of what you should know. In MBBS, you're not supposed to be experts of these subjects. So to get a basic idea, I would recommend watch Paul Bolling's video. FMT and community medicine definitely ask your seniors for their advice. The questions which are going to get in your final exams are going to be different from what you Study. so you must know what you're exactly preparing for another thing which I will suggest is the, you have ample time so try to get an MCQ book it can be anything if you're preparing for USMLE do you world if you're preparing for something else take the MCQ book and solve the questions that is going to be really helpful this is the ideal time to solve MCQs of these subjects hard recommendation is don't use more than five to six months for studying part one subjects so that you have at least two or three months which you can use to study medicine so that can be at the beginning of the third year part one or at the end of third year part one in the beginning of third year part one i went over the subjects quickly i was studying for usmle back then so i studied medicine mostly and uh, after the first two or three months then i started preparing for third year part one i often get this question that hey arjun you always talk about study less but try to remember more so if we are studying less are we doing justice to our patients yes we are doing justice because you're supposed to get a good overall understanding in the undergraduate level right of the whole subject but when you are doing post graduation you're supposed to know minute details so in the undergraduate level your task is to know the whole subject and have a basic framework while in the postgraduate level it your task is to build on that basic framework it's very important that you don't try to master or don't shoot for perfection during your part two 13 months and even if you're putting in like two three extra months from part one 16 months 18 months this time is not enough for you to master these subjects right you have the rest of your life as a doctor when you are going to do md medicine md path md pharma whatever so then you have ample time to master these subjects individually so then you can refer to the big reference books so medicine so in medicine don't use harrison's davidson uh, kumar and clark or any other book that is more than 1000 or 1200 pages as your main resource so these are reference books and should be used as reference book i would suggest that don't use matthews also from day one so what I would suggest is 
try to get a good understanding of the subject and for that i used online method the videos are free i can put the link down in the description box and also paul bolin's video so if you are an overachiever and you want to know a lot about medicine you can shoot for paul bolin's videos those are also free once you're done with it you will require a, a book right to refer to understand and to read so i would suggest step up to medicine is a good book and um, also ask your seniors so the seniors will usually have some sort of notes in west bengal we ha uh, had someone called letu da so he had created a notes of like 500 600 pages we studied that it was really high yield so your seniors might also recommend something similar 500 600 pages which you can go quickly in two or three months along with the videos so to get a basic framework of medicine so practical is also very important in final year and it causes a lot of confusion and drama <laughs> a lot of people are afraid that they are going to fail attend wards and clinics regularly ask your teachers to teach you the different clinical methods that they expect you to know and video record them the most important thing which i i did back in my time as a final year student was i recorded these lessons how to do the respiratory exam or go about a case of ascites or chronic liver disease i had these videos recorded so that i can watch them later i shared them with my friends and they also recorded other videos because uh, the same teacher might be teaching us chronic liver disease and stroke to the other batch. I will link the resources which I recorded and I, I had uploaded them to Mega in the description box down below. You can refer them. I think these are West Bengal specific kind of, but you can always like use them as a guide. That being said, for practical, you can use anything. I used Arup Kundu being from West Bengal. You can use PJ Mehta or any other book which your senior suggests. This is going to be my general recommendation about medicine and medicine should take up about 60% 60, 60 of your time. Let's talk surgery. Even before I give my recommendation about surgery, I know that uh, some of you might give me some slack in the comment section, but that's fine. So in India, the way the surgery syllabus is formed and the questions which are asked, is not like the medicinal basis of surgery but rather it's kind of the surgical aspect like how are we supposed to do it what steps are we following as a medical student in the undergraduate level you are not supposed to know the steps you should have a basic idea of like where we are the surgeon is going from what plane he is dissecting and other things but step by step you're not supposed to know the procedure the most important thing about surgery which, which people don't understand is why are we choosing an invasive procedure over a medicinal treatment cutting someone is not that easy right going through surgery for a human being is a difficult thing you need anesthesia there are post-operative -op complications so the most important question which a surgeon should ask and also like a doctor should ask is why i am choosing surgery over medicinal treatment now that's the most important questions and i feel like that's not being taught well enough so to get a basic idea of the framework of surgery i suggest use dr pestana's notes and this will give you a general idea and framework of what you are supposed to know as an undergraduate student. It's only 100 pages, maybe 150 pages, but it gives you the framework which on which you can build the rest of your career if you want to be a surgeon. It will hardly take you a week to read this, but if you don't read this and you just read surgery blindly, you are setting yourself up for failure. That's my two cents. I would suggest don't buy Bailey and Love, Schwartz, SRB, and don't use these books from day one. Go over Pestanas, Go. you can use online method videos to form the frameworks like you did in medicine. And once you're done with it, while you're solving questions, then you can refer to SRB. Talking about practicals, so I being from West Bengal, we use Makhan Lal Saha's bedside clinics in surgery, but uh, you can ask your senior for like what books you use in your own state. Gyne and OBS. Now this is going to be really interesting. Gyne and OBS and pediatrics are the, those subjects which are not that much studied so when i said 80 uh, 60 percent from med medicine people are going to use maybe another 30 percent studying surgery from srb or bailey and love or whatever so 10 percent remains for gynecologists and pediatrics eight percent goes to gyne two percent for pediatrics people think that pediatrics is medicine why study it differently right don't do that don't buy dc datta or william and don't use these books from day one you can lend them from your seniors later on i use both online method videos and paul bolin videos to get a good understanding of the gynecological framework in my head online method and paul bolins are very good uh, like hard recommendations for me for gyne gynecology when it comes to a book to refer to read from uh, me being from west bengal I would definitely suggest Dr. Aftabuddin Mandal. He was one of our prof professors. He created a small book which, uh, uh, which is specifically targeted for the undergraduate level. That being said, attend wards, participate in the labor room as a student. For gynae practicals, you can use DC Datta's bedside clinics. So DC Datta is written by Hiralal Konar. He was also a, one of the professors in our college. So I use that book. You can use something else uh, in your state. 
what i would suggest attend wards participate in the labor room actively as a student go through the whole procedure maybe even deliver a baby and like see how that whole thing works also attend two or three cesarean sections so you get a good idea of how it it's being done don't wait for internship like i know you will eventually do it in 6 or 7 months but to get an introduction in your head during this time really helps you understand the whole thing while you're studying from dc datta or you're watching online made it our paul bolin videos let's uh, talk about pediatrics so pediatrics uh, the book which is regularly used by everyone is ghai don't use it from day one don't use it so to put it simply ghai is an excellent resource when it comes to pediatrics don't use it you need to build a framework in your head after which you can use ghai i'm i know i'm repeating this for all the four subjects but again use online made it uh it will hardly take you a week to finish this videos if you are like the overachiever then you can definitely use paul bolin's videos those are extremely detailed will give you a good idea of what's the difference between pediatrics and medicine but once you're done with it then you can solve questions and use ghai so for practical i use shibarjan ghosh that's one of the books we use in west bengal you can ask your seniors definitely attend wards try to protect yourself from the virus which usually goes around in the pediatrics ward and try to segregate pediatrics from medicine uh try to understand what you will be required to do differently in your pediatrics practical exam during your uh, final year examination so that you are not tense during during that time in this sections i am going to hurt some people's feelings and that's fine uh most of your seniors are going to give you this exact recommendation so during the first 3 or 4 months what you are going to do is you are going to open up harrison dc datta srb and ghai and try to study from it so after 2 months you are going to realize you remember nothing and that time is already wasted so then you are going to move to the shorter books maybe matthews for medicine uh, for surgery you are going to ask for your seniors note for gyne you might use after sars book or a uh, uh, shorter resource for pediatrics you might use some sort of like senior notes or whatever so don't waste those initial months trying to study or master those big resources i did the exact opposite thing in the first 3 or 4 months what i did was i built up that framework watched paul bolins watched online made it videos and uh, then the next 3 or 4 months once i have that framework in my head that i need to know rheumatology lupus this much i have this this much knowledge now i want to build on it so the second phase 3 or 4 months i started solving questions both i i i was preparing for usmle so i started solving usmle questions as well as university questions from my university during solving questions i came across a lot of doubts so this is the ideal time to use harrison davidson's ghai uh, dc data or any other srb or any other book but while solving this try to make your own notes and have these handy because these are going to be really useful during the final exam so the final 3 or 4 months you refer to your own notes you refer to online made it videos the things which you keep on forgetting maybe the autoimmune diseases or something else so that is the ideal way of doing thing doing it in reverse usually people start from harrison go down to the senior notes i started from online made it and paul bolin and went up to slowly to harrison's and davidson's and use them as a reference book which they should be used as so this is all that what i wanted to say about final year it's definitely a cruel time and one of the most difficult times after f- uh, first year mbbs but if you plan and manage it well then uh, you should not be afraid most of us went through this just fine i was afraid during my medicine practical you will be too but if you attend wards and clinics regularly if you uh, video record your professors ask them to teach share these videos with your friends get them to record something else and if you basically if you plan this year well ahead of time you are going to do good and um, yeah that's it thank you for listening